This week, episode 335 of Stogie Geeks, we have a special guest in studio. We have Adam, who is going to join us. Drew's late to his one-year anniversary <laughs> party, because Stogie Geeks is starting now without Drew. It has been one year since the little dark hair kid from Texas has been joining us here on Stogie Geeks. We're starting a party without him. We're going to talk about the past year. And in our interview, we have the opportunity to interview no stranger to Stogie Geeks, Enrique Sanchez. He's the CEO and founder of Global Premium Cigars. Global Premium Cigars makes no doubt about it that they are proudly Nicaraguan. <laughs> they also own the blend 1502. They're truly a Nicaraguan treasure. We'll have some cigar news. We're definitely going to talk about the bus tour with no bus and no people. That's for sure. Uh, they reneged on my invite and press release. That might come with consequence, for sure. Um, we'll have some cigar news about some virtual events, some sticks we've been smoking, and stuff you just might need to know. Stogie Geeks, episode 335, starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stoy Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm all set up for the uh, Stoy Geek uh, mobile lounge. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to Stogie Geeks. I am your host, Joe Hosempa. It is Anything Can Happen Friday when Enrique is on the show. Enrique is the CEO of Global Premium Cigars, and he is responsible for the brand 1502 Cigars. And I must make a side note that they are truly Nicaraguan, for <laughs> sure. Uh, if you want to learn more about the brands and get into uh, some of that, Stogie Geeks, you go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash... 298 off the top of my head. Uh, yep, I'm right. StogieGeeks.com forward slash 298, and you can catch Enrique's uh, last interview with Stogie Geeks. And now we are going to continue and pivot into a little bit about the XO series and get into uh, what's going on with Global Premium and Enrique, who's chasing his kids around. Running around in the COVID quarantine down there in sunny Miami, but he is like me. At least he gets to have a little bit of sanity and smoke his cigars on a daily basis because if it wasn't for that, I would not know where I would be. Enrique, welcome to Stogie Geeks again. How are you? Hey, Joe. Thank you for having me over again. It's always a pleasure to be back. It's uh you know, crisis times, and as we're going right now with all this COVID-19 uh, worldwide, and, you know, like you said, we always have to find a way, a moment, and just to relax and enjoy, to find your insanity, to, to, you, you, your mind, to, to fix everything that is around it. And, you know, um, relax. It's very important. So I'm glad to be back, uh, and I hope everybody's doing well. We are doing well. Stogie Geek, just a quick reference. Last time Enrique was on the show was in March of 2019. And um, we're going to talk about the industry and what it's been a roller coaster ride with this COVID stuff for sure. Uh, and we're going to spend a little bit of time on his brand as well. But before we get to that, I want to introduce a stranger to the Stogie Geek show. This is Adam. Adam, these are the Stogie Geeks who are listening and watching or who are going to catch the podcast 
they're watching either live now or they will catch the podcast on Monday and you're already tagged in on social media. So welcome to Stogie Geeks. Hey, I appreciate you bringing me on to the show and whatnot. I know we've talked about it in the past. Just want to say hi to the whole cigar fam out there. You know, appreciate everybody that's out there. Let's, you know, stick together and just freaking enjoy our smokes, buddy. Adam is going to bring his commentary from the retail perspective uh, there. He is a uh, buyer of a humidor, a rather large-sized humidor here mm. in the state of Rhode Island, and we are going to add a uh, business and retail element uh, to uh, conversations. I'll tell you, I'll be totally honest with you, Thank God Paul has not hired me on my sales skills for Stogie <laughs> Geeks. I will tell you that. It had taken me eight months to get Adam to come to this <laughs> microphone. Just so just so you are listening and watching, it has taken me uh, eight, eight months there. So, And by the way, today is Drew's one-year anniversary, and he is tied up in a business meeting. And I got a text. He might be joining us. We don't know. I'm usually going to go with when it says I might be there. I don't count on it. But this is the cigar industry, and the show must go on. So, Enrique, what's been going on over there at 1502? Well, uh, Joe, as you know, it's almost been, uh, well, next year it's going to be 10 years. So it's going to be our 10th anniversary. All right. And, of course, uh, something new will be coming on. Uh, and I'm not going to, I cannot say anything about it yet until everything is ready. But definitely it's going to be fantastic. Uh, uh, we already have uh, two main lines in, in, in Grow Blue Cigars, in which, you know, the most famous 512 cigars. And then, of course, uh, we came out with Cachitos. You know, for for the, for those uh, a cachito is me a, a, a little one in, in in Latin America, and what what it does, you know, for those 30, 40 minutes smoke, it's a perfect perfect smoke. It's it's uh, Nicaragua Honduras blend together with no bonding, so it's it's it's, it's amazing in, in aspect. And of course, in fifty one two cigars, we will go over to uh, uh, the, the different blend, uh, the different selections that we have in the lines. Mm -hmm. What are they called? Cachitos. Cachitos. Okay, mm -hmm. I've called them Chicos for years, just like <laughs> little Chicos. Like, like, so I was kind of close. I mean, I'm Italian, right? I, I just, you know, and that's actually, are they going to come out with the different 1502 blends, the smaller version? Is that is that there? No, no, it, no. It, oh, it's going to be it's separate a, it's line. A it's it's a completely different uh, uh, brand, the, the 1502 cigars. It's uh, we got uh, Cachitos and then we have 1502 cigars, two, di two different uh, brands. Oh, thank God. Thank God. God, you're doing that, right? Because this is what's been happening, okay? Right? They've been making, you know, you know, and not for nothing, we, you know, the cigar industry thinks that they're all freaking geniuses, right? Bud did this with the freaking ponies, you know, like the, the you, you buy a, you have a beer bottle, I don't know, it's like 14, 12 ounces, and then they made the little ponies, right? And you know, the little, yeah. you know what I'm talking about there? Okay. Of These freaking cigar companies are coming up with Chico's. Or, or your word, cachito. What? What's your word again? Cachitos. Cachitos. I was pretty close, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just missed so, a little so, bit. So, so they're coming up with these little cigars, but they're taking the blend or the scraps. My word, mm. not theirs. And the and and they're putting it in a tin, and they're selling it for half the price, and it's like. 4% of the cigar if you're talking volume based. You yeah. know what I mean? Thank well, God you're doing something different. I, I, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, <laughs> let me explain a little bit more in, in the cachitos. You know, uh, most of the factories, all, all the factories, uh, they always have to have a, a, a short version on, on the cigars. Uh, why? Because you have leftovers of the others, of, of making the other uh, blends, and you have something you have to do with, with those leftovers. That's why they, they they're incentive to do a small, a small runs or a small or shorter smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, and with cachitos, we didn't do that because uh, what we did, we blend a, a, a cigar with, with long leaf. That's why it's still a, a, a premium cigar, uh, and, and and we blend it specific for those 30, 40 minutes to smoke. Yeah. So it's no leftovers, no short fillers, nothing like that. Yeah. It's, it's completely a, 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 it's something unique blended for that specific time. And when, when we have our, our portfolio. There was something missing in that time, and I really hate it when you know I grab a uh, even a, a robusto, and I light it, and halfway I have to go and put put it away. Mm. So it, that's why it comes with the idea. Okay, let's do something something smaller, uh, something unique for for that blend specific, and that's why I say, hey, you know what? In in, in Nicaragua, we say, give me, dame un cachito, give me something small. 
or yep. give me a little bit. Yep. And that and that's why we we came out with with a, the, the concept of cachito. Now, fifteen oh two portfolio is well developed. It's perfect the way it is. It has everything and in, in, in the different characteristics. Uh, so that's why it had to be something out of fifteen oh two cigars in to be cachitos. Yep. Yep. What's the um What's the flavor for, uh, profile that you're going after, or or are there going to be separate well, cachitos? It's it's we only have one cachito, one size, yep. and it comes in, in uh, a little bundle. Uh, it, the, the, it's a bundle of four, five packs, and so you you, you, go, you go to the shop and they have a nice display. You just grab the five packs, put it in your packet, and, and go. Yeah, simple, simple as it is. And it, but it's going to be only one size, one blend, and that's it. That's specific for, for, for that. For, it, 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 was perfect. it was perfect for that blend, for the size. Are you going to give me the blend? Well, it's Nicaragua, Honduras. So oh, well, well I, would, I, wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything less coming from you. You know, are you gonna, can, can you at least give the story geeks like a profile? Is it going to be, is it going to be like a truly medium? Is it going to be? For... It's definitely, it's, it's, a, it's a medium body yep. uh, for, for the short, short smoke. And the beauty of it is like uh, in, in any of the blends that, in, in which we have created, it's in which is part of the signature. It's flavor bomb. It has to have a flavor, a rich flavor profile. Now, I, I don't like to be influenced what the flavor it is in the cigar because to me, it, it might taste something different completely from, from somebody else. Yep. Since my background, remember, a flavor, it's a reminder of, 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 that you have in your conscious and subconscious or something you have tried before. The mm -hmm. more you try the flavor, the more fresh it's it's in your mind to it uh so uh, you cannot say it tastes like like chocolate if somebody had never tasted chocolate before mm. so you w w w when you uh, try to compare flavor profile or something that it, it's it's not related with tobacco uh, that depends a lot in the aspect and that's why i don't like to I I influence in that but i always tell people hey you know what try yep. see what tastes for you yep you know that is a great way to stay grounded with your type of marketing. You sell the experience, relax and enjoy, and let the palate do what it wants to do. It drives me crazy. Even sometimes when we do like sticks of the week in there, I try to say like it's maybe a hint of chocolate or this, but I, but I stay to the basics, right? I stay to the basics when it comes to cigar reviews. I say, okay, it's zesty. And what I mean by zesty is that if someone sprayed like a, a grapefruit or an orange or a lemon in your face, you get like a freshness, right? Like a, like a spritz, right? And you can taste that from the smoke content and you can taste that from uh, – you, if, if you bullet guillotine or V-cut it and just had it on the, on the, on the pre-draw, right? And, and it's all different. And, and I try to stay within, like, not four squares, but, like, you know, salty, sweet, ze mm -hmm. you know, zesty. Uh, have, I talk about the, the portability of the cigar when I do reviews, as opposed to some of these reviews, Enrique. You know, I had the aroma of citrus watermelon with this, and I'm like, this is freaking crazy. <laughs> like, dude, now I know they're writing about it and they're elaborating on that, but um, you know, I like I like your approach. You know, I like your approach. Hey, man, it's gonna be in a yeah. five pack. It's gonna be in a bundle, five pack. You put it there, you got it. And I think, consumer wise. That's a smart move from an industry perspective. Now, obviously, there are other brands that are doing it, and I joke around and say, you know, they, you take other brands and put them into smaller tins, and then you do that, and then other companies are starting to copy. I noticed the new Valcadas in your humidor, right? Oh, yeah. The LFD Valcada, I was like, oh, they make tins now? Like, freaking, we're going to have, like, regular cigars and tins, right? Like, it just gets too, it just gets too flooded. And my, for them on the retail side, because they have to sort through what their offerings are for the customers, and we're going to get to that in a second. But, you know, they, they have to sort through that and then present it to their consumer Knowing what the consumer is there, and it's like, this is crazy. And the fact that you make a totally different blend, if it pops and people like it, then they're going to buy it. It's that simple. You know what I mean? Well, l l l let me just give you an example how Cachito has been doing the market. I mean, it, right now, we uh, everything, all the Cachitos ordered just about their uh, back order. Uh, uh, we have, I uh, believe, uh, in the next two weeks, we have the next, next batch coming over. 
And, uh, but this has been a problem we have been getting in every batch. Uh, as soon as they hit, hit the ground, they, they disappear. They're all gone. Yep. And, and that, that has been trying to, us trying to keep, keep up with the demand with cachitos and um but uh, like believe later, sooner or later we will be matching up to the to the demand but has they have been moving very well everywhere i mean even in in germany uh, we did uh, the first shipping of cachito was uh less than a month ago and we had the ne- the, the next order last week mm-hmm. so uh, if you imagine that they, they, they flew and, and and to able to to create them or, or or produce them it takes months to do to uh, just to in the agent room it has to be at least uh, three to four months so it's it's a it's a little bit uh, difficult to always catch up and, and, and with, with the demand or, or trying to understand the demand the aspect but you know it's uh we do our best the best way we can do it mm-hmm. that was that yeah yeah and so you've already put them in markets across the pond i say across the pond because well, i have family from spain and that's what they say yes uh <laughs> we had los cachitos uh, was like it was the uh, united states of course uh, germany uh south africa Oh, wow. And I believe in Central America as well. Yeah. Those are, 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 are the places that we have them uh, at, at the moment. There are all the all the markets in which they already have a few cigars. There, there will be a, a, a good next move for them to expand to the profile, mm-hmm. uh, the portfolio. Sorry. So it's uh, it's, uh, it's it's they're doing tremendous well. There's no doubt. Yeah, I think the cons- cigar consumer wants that action. Of well, of that twenty minute, I uh, you know I want to go to walk the dog or I gotta go do that and I mean I've never experienced the twenty minute smoke truly I truly mean this I've never had a job where I've been time crunched if you will right because I've been on my own since two thousand four until I came here to Security Weekly in twenty eighteen right. So from mm-hmm. 2004 to 2018, the bulk of my career, I've been on my own. So I've never had a time crunch. I could always go to a cigar shop and stay for the length of a Robusto Toro. I don't smoke Gordo, yeah. but yeah. and stay. Yeah. So it didn't matter because I was always doing my computer work and doing that there, and, 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 and that's fine, right? But there are a lot of, of consumers out there that truly go to a cigar shop, get a Robusto, Stay for 25 minutes, and they got to go because they're either on their way home or they got to go to the kids' baseball game. And I remember the glory days. My grandfather watching me play baseball, smoking cigars. But anyway. Oh, the right? good old days. We're, we're right? The, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, and, and they're doing that there. And I think the consumer time-wise. Now, then all of a sudden, for me, COVID hits, right? Now, uh. I have a 22-month-old son at home who was 20 months at home. I can't be ripping out a freak. I'm chasing him around. Even if when I was outside, well, here I was in New England, right? In March, in April, it was still cold, right? It was cold outside. It's like, I'm not going to go outside and freeze. And, like, I went three, four days without a cigar. I'm like, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, like, going. And and, and it's funny because I went to the, uh, and, and I never had the tins, right? So I went to a cigar shop, and I got the tins of, you know, uh, Liga and uh, what the hell's the other one? Um, I got the uh, it was a Liga tin and it was an Ashton tin, right? Mm-hmm. I can name names, you guys can name names if you want to. That's on you, right? <laughs> but 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 and I'm like, oh, and I remember after the first round of that because now I'm just doing the tin, right? I'm getting the 20 minutes. Here's the point of my story I went to Havana and I bought. I remember I came in on a Friday and I had you watch Caden right quick. Oh, yeah, that's right? true, yeah. I bought the little uh, black label. Um, the Rorschachs. No, 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 the Killer Bee. The, no, the Green Horn, the, the little ones. The well, black the, label ones. Well, the, you got the Green Horns and Killer Bees. They're on the okay. smaller side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I was, so I was picking up like really smaller ones because those little those, those little cigars ju- just didn't do it for me. You know what I mean? It's just like I ended up like burning through two, not at once, but you know. But but there are a lot of consumers out there. What do you think? A lot of consumers would would enjoy something like that. I mean, it's definitely something that we're like seeing kind of pick up a little bit more at the end of the day. It's kind of like uh, I noticed, especially like you even said with COVID. Mm-hmm. You know, certain people you're able to escape for like an hour, hour and a half, go do what you want to do at the cigar bar or at a cigar shop, lounge, whatever you want to do. But it's um, I've been getting a lot of people coming in asking like, what do you have for you know. Kind of like the Ashton Senoritas, you mm-hmm. know, the Undercrown Maduro tins, 
you know, the Lavacadas yep. came out and whatnot. So it's definitely something in there. It's um, the whole landscape's changing with everything that's going on, but that demand is definitely on the rise for it. Mm. You know, and it's actually, Enrique, something I was going to ask you about is I know you said that you're making this blend specifically for that size. But one thing I've noticed, at least in my market over here, and I know everywhere else around, it's uh, going to be a little bit different. But if these things do take off, are you considering doing something a little bit, you know, coming out with a Robusto Toro in case people really enjoy them? So if they do have that hour and a half, you know, and they're really focused on that, you want to provide that experience for them even in a longer hour, hour and a half, two hour sort of time slot. Well, it's, uh, I would say yes and no. Uh, and to your question of being, being good, good for, uh, for the fishing right now. Mm. Uh, the reason I say no is that due to uh, it was playing specific for that side. Mm. So when you change the, 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 the Vitola in a bling, it definitely changes the, the, the experience you have in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, that, that creation, if you, if you did so. Uh, and besides, if you are looking to have a Robusto or have a Toro or a Torpedo, we have everything else in 152 cigars line. So you, you, mm-hmm. can, you can move from one, one way or the other. You don't have to stay with the same blend as, as it is. And that's the beauty of have a well-developed portfolio is that it depends in the time frame that, or, or the strength profile or the flavor profile that you prefer. We have all the basis covers there. Okay. What's the difference when <clears throat> you make a blend for Robusto Toro than the smaller size? Like, what do you go after? Like, what, what, what's in... I had somebody ask me the old the old day. Uh, uh, he asked me, "How do you how do you come out with the flavors mm. uh, when you, when you start blending?" And and my response was very simple. It's like uh, I don't even think about the flavors. Uh, I don't uh, uh, most most of the time the flavors find me. I, I'm not I'm not chasing the flavors. Uh, what I I start with when I start the blending, I start with the concept. Uh, I want a cigar uh, to be my my morning cigar, my, my, my after breakfast cigar, for example, and that's when we create if it's onto Emerald. Uh, what characteristics do I want in that one? And that's how we start working ar- around it, and then uh, and trying di- different different prototypes until we find exactly what we're looking for, and then we're like, oh, this is amazing, nothing that has ever been considered. Uh, and and I, I see a lot of, 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 of blenders, and with all the respect to everybody, uh, but when they go there, I'm like, okay, we need more chocolate, we need more 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 coconut here, we need more, and it's that it, it, it's at least not the way I do things. I mean, and I always seen it. There are two type of blenders in this world. You got the corporate blenders, in which they're uh, very knowledgeable about about the tobacco it is from 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 from, from the sea or even before the sea. To, uh, for the ground to 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 the shelf, and they study very well the market, and and and, they, and when they blend, they blend, they blend for specific markets. It is you know if you're gonna blend for Mexico, you're gonna put a little bit more, uh, you're gonna look for something a little bit more spice to it because that's how the the, the market uh, enjoys uh, uh, the, the, their the experience. Uh, uh, and then you have the the the, the, the artistic blenders, if, and I would like to consider myself in that in that category in which we blend for ourselves. Uh, we blame for for mm. for for uh, concepts. We blame we blame for something that it, it, it has not ever been discovered yet, but we know it's there somewhere to be discovered, and we, and hopefully with the market we enjoy it. And that's that's the that's the difference between one or the other. Uh, it, just to give you an example, of, uh, I said fifteen two Nicaragua. How the, the, that concept started is even before the blending and everything. It's when my wife told me she was pregnant for my youngest one, Enrique Fernando. So I'm born in Nicaragua, born and raised in Nicaragua. My wife it was the same. Now we live in the United States. He was born and here in the United States. So my concept was I want to create something pure Nicaragua, uh, that's clean Nicaragua, that has uh, all the regions of Nicaragua, and, and so he does not forget his roots. And that's how uh, 18, years, 18 months later, we came out with a specific blend as, as this is the one we're looking for. And that's why you find a uh, Jalapa, Condé, Estelillo, Metepe, all the different four regions in that in that blend is specific. But it was starting with a concept, a, a completely different, not with a, fla- a, fla- a flavor profile. The, fla- the, the flavor found me in, in, in the end. Boom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Corporate blenders that's uh i like i like the titles I, that, right there that, that's yeah. uh, you, you know you the, that's that you know you you, you got to know who you are in business mm. and one of the things uh, one of the reasons why i i definitely enjoy having enrique on especially the last interview 
And this interview is going to top it, but the last interview was amazing when you were telling us the story about all the names of the cigars and how they came. And they're all different points in his life where he had major milestones, having a child, oh, getting okay. married, all that. And, and, then, and then the flavor found him. It's like, you know, it's unheard of. Usually it's like, you know, you know, I heard those uh, league is so pretty good. <laughs> so let, let's come up with uh, uh, something that, you know, and, and, and there are some blenders that do that and some companies that do that and some don't. And, and, and you know, others go on artistic artwork, others go there and you got to know who you are in business. And that's one of the reasons yeah. why, I lo like I said, like, you know, you, 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 you know who you are in business. You're, you're clearly focused and uh, telling the stories is just super cool. You know, how did the XO come about? How did that, oh, how did that, how did that, that uh, cause, cause, that cause that's is, a limited uh, release still, right? That's a limited well, release. That was released, uh, was, uh, three, four years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. But remember, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a limited production. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 XO, it was something, uh, completely out of my career, career, uh, career I was wondering what can I do with with, with aged tobacco, with, with premium aged tobacco. And uh, I got a concept uh, or the idea uh, from uh, actually Johnny Walker. Okay. Johnny Walker, you know, do you know how Johnny Walker Blue Label came along? Uh, I heard that it was my version, and, and please correct me if I was wrong, if I'm if I'm wrong, because we actually did a Johnny Walker Blue event from there, uh, but the, at the time, but. Um, I, I'm not gonna lie. I got pretty drunk off the blue, and the, and, <laughs> and, and, when, and the girl was easy to look at, so I, I might have not have been paying attention to what she <laughs> said. But if I recall what she's saying, they have a mixture of the black, the red, and there's one more, the green, right? And then it's aged, and then after it's aged, mm. it's it's a mix. Is my yeah, it, it, almost it's right? It's a mix, indeed. Yeah, but uh, 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 the way it started, you know, every production, uh, you got a master blender. They said, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna uh, make x uh, uh, x amount of bottle of, of blue." Oh, oh sorry, the, uh, the, the Johnny Walker Black. Okay, this is what I need, uh, and the, the, uh, you know, they got all the barrels in the warehouse, and and he goes over and start uh, uh, tasting because they had to reblend every time they do production. They had to reblend it because they had to twist it. The, 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 the rough material changes sometimes, so they had to adjust it and uh, balance it in the way it always has to be consistent. How it tastes. Uh, so uh, what it happens, he comes along. He says, "This is the list what I need." I need uh, 300 barrels of this one, 500 barrels of that one, and etc. Et so what happens in 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 the, in the in the warehouse? You always have barrels and leftovers in the back. So in the next time, in the next production, you have the new, the, the new barrels coming in, and you know you do the release, and you always again has barrels leftovers in the back. After after uh, after decades of doing that, if you can imagine, you have a a, a very big uh, warehouse full of le leftovers barrels in which you cannot use them for anything else because you cannot mass produce them you must have you might you might have uh, 20 of those ones or maybe three of that one and, and, and for this year and this for this production so it, it's a big mess so what do you do with those leftovers it's, it's premium uh, 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 scotch there's no doubt so this young massive blender start working uh, with all the leftovers to come out with something new so what it, it, it's that's why you have a lot more blended in the in a normal uh, uh, or the blend, uh, the regular blended selection of Johnny Walker. So when when when, I, when somebody told me the story, I was like, you know what? I'm sure the tobacco industry had the same problem. You sure, know, it worked with Placencia. I, 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 the one of the biggest uh, advantages is that you have access to all the tobacco as the, it says. But uh, I'm sure their their bales of tobacco and which their premium, they all have been aging very well and they were all taking care of it. But the big companies cannot, cannot use that because it's very small one and they cannot mass produce them. But being a, a, as a, a boutique a premium company in cigars and in the cigar industry, I can work with that. So that's when I say they open the doors, you know, all this, you know, one batch, two batch, a, 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 a small, a small ones. And, and I start working with that one. So, okay, let's see, what do we have? What makes a great together? And most important is how can we duplicate it once it's it's built? Because you know you can always make a great cigar once, but you know you can enjoy yourself. But you know how can you maintain duplicating the time? To be able to do that, we had oh, not only choose the, the tobacco that was available in that in that in that time. It was it, it was eighteen years old, 
but also you have to have, have to have backup for the 17, the 16, and the 15, and so on, so on. So when this batch goes, the next the next one walks in. So that it's very, it, it was very important. So that it limits your 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 options, but also you have to be more creative in that aspect. Now in the 51 to XO, there are five different tobacco that we use in that one, in which four are 18 year old tobacco. Oh, That's wow. why it's very rare. It's 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 I mean, we call it a masterpiece because it's something completely out of this world. Uh, and and but sadly we cannot. Uh, somebody I had a, a Germany they wanted uh, was a 200 boxes last year and no, sorry, this year and they only got 10. I, I got somebody in Dubai. They say, hey, I need uh, 2,000 boxes of that one. I, said, I would love to sell 2,000 boxes of that one, but I don't have them. Let's talk next year. Let's see how the, the, the next batch comes along and how many are we, are we really we're going to have in, in, in that blend. So that's one of the things is make it unique. Now, to the to the experience of, 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 and the, the aspect is something I've never seen and never tasted in my life. I mean, even when you start with the XO, uh, Right out of the bat, you know the strain, the the the, the 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 flavor hits you, and you're like, oh, this is going to be something very strong. But then that curve it starts dropping after the second, yeah. third puff, and the flavor or the complexity it starts working. It, it, it goes, it, it, it changes chip, and they will start working very close together into almost the, the, the second, third, and the, everything is mixed together, and it, it's like explosion. And that's beautiful. That's what we call the masterpiece. It's like a symphony. You know, you, you start with a symphony, and you stop. You start this composing it, the, the orchestra, and then you start building it little by little again. You know, because some of the trumps, uh, violins, uh, this, but and, and little by little you start putting everything back together in pieces into the second turn, and you had the, the, the part of the symphony. And you're like, oh my god! But just the experience of getting to that point, it's 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 phenomenal. It's 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 it's, it's really hard to, to explain. It. I always said you have to try it to I I couldn't understand it. I like this guy. It's a super. It's a. I'm telling you that that's like, you know, that's why I says like, you know, do you got some sales reps up here in the northeast? Because I I I remember I remember when I when I first got exposed to 1502 was at the Havana cigar shop, mm -hmm. uh, pre your time, and I went over to uh, another cigar shop across the bay that they're they're ver they're friendly and i says which i'm also friends in that cigar shop and they're a much smaller outlet than that and i says you you gotta that was brian from uh churchill smoke shop and lounge i says oh yeah i says i says you gotta get these in here mm. like these are these, these are these are, these are, these are I, I and he's like oh, who is this you know who is this guy <laughs> oh, right on, how they all go I says, listen i'm like i was like you know it, it, it's not too many times that i've walked in there and says like you gotta go in there and get these in there uh, I think I've done it for four people in in uh, five years that he's been around. Fifteen, mm. yeah, twenty fifteen. So yeah, so it's like you know, it was like one of the times I walked in, I was like, "You got to get these," and then and then boom, and then uh, you know, then the consumers they get them, get them, get them, get them, which we're gonna get to that in a second mm -hmm. on your end. You know, they get them and they're like, "Oh, Adam, these are you know," because they, they report to him, you know, when they talk in, he picked them out of cigar. Did the cut and lie, educating the consumers. That's his there. And they're like, oh, I like him, I like him, I like him. And then all of a sudden, it's like, you know, uh, they, they, they just light switch and then go to something else. They're like, they're like dogs when the fence opens, right? That's a, oh, if, yeah. if I, if I <laughs> like, like uh, when it comes to business, whether I'm interviewing Enrique or, or anybody in the cybersecurity field or whatever it is, or if I'm you, or anybody, I always try to say, okay, if I did their job, what would my problems be? And if I did your job as a on the retail side, they're like dogs. They, you open up the fence, and there's another cigar outside across the street, and there, and then they go. I'm not saying you have to be loyal to one brand, but I mean it's got to be very hard for you to find that balance as well. I mean, it's it's pretty difficult at the end of the day because it's, you know, depending on the consumer type of mood they're in, representation, you know, like how often does a rep come in there, well, how much social media presentation uh, re representation do they have and stuff like that. It becomes very difficult because you're right, they're kind of like dogs. But what's interesting, though, is that you kind of have a uh, combination between both of them at some points. You know, sometimes some people are just looking at Instagram and they're on a run with it where they're just following every single cigar that's coming out it's like you see this cigar did you grab this cigar what's going on with this and that mm -hmm. and i'm like okay it's like i've seen it a little bit here seen a little bit there but i've only gotten a few people from it and then next thing you know they're just like 
bam, I'm stuck. Up, I'm back on my Ashtons. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm back on my Fuente. Mm-hmm. And that's all they'll start smoking for a while. And it's just like, and it's almost like you got to kind of direct them a little bit into, you know, in the way you want to keep them to. And you almost got to kind of do a balance. It's almost like I put myself in check a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've probably done it here and there, like when you got got into a drinking phase where it's just, it's like, or something where it's all of a sudden you're stuck on one thing. I don't know about you, Enrique. You know, I don't know if you have like that go-to drink, you know, and all of a sudden you start getting away from it. Then all of a sudden you got to check yourself be like, you know what, let me go back to this one. You know, let me get them back to this one so that they remember it, you know, and they can keep it in sure. their portfolio. But see, I think that's human nature. Let me ask you this question because we're we're having a a great conversation here, which I think is very relevant to the industry. Is that type of consumer behavior, is that the same way in other countries? Or are they more loyal to what they smoke than than the American than the American market, because you could, because you have experience, obviously, uh, selling outside of North America, right? So, so what's what you know here in North America or here? I I can speak for the Northeast. It's just like Adam says. They're following the social media, the influencers. They want new, 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 fresh, fresh, fresh. Forget about the old, and they chase that. Consumer-wise, six months to eight months, and then they go back to what their original roots are. How's it like with your experience on the buy-in end from, from, from your customers? Like, if you've done any other interviews, is it, is it that reactive, Enrique? Uh, you know, Joe, it's, it's very interesting. Every market changes. There's no doubt. And, and you have to understand, uh, as a market point of view, uh, the market changes in time as well. So today can be this, can be the other. Uh, uh, just to give you an example, in, in, in Europe, in which it's going to be very unfair to generalize Europe as one because it, it, there's a lot of markets there. Mm-hmm. But in Europe, it's very conservative market uh, 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 compared to the United States. Uh, for them, it has been Habano S.A.L. for five, over 500 years. Uh, and that's uh, uh, and, and whatever Habano comes out, doesn't matter if it's good or bad, that's the way it should, every cigar should be. Uh, and, and trying to break that, that ice, it, it, it has been it has been a challenge. But have you seen compare in in, in the last let's say ten years, not even ten years, let's talk about five years, how the Nicaraguan uh, uh, cigars has uh, penetrated that the European market? And oh yeah, where are they are at this moment? Being a very conservative uh, uh, market as, as as it is in Europe, it, 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 it has been a big change. I mean, it, we are doing tremendous well in in. In Europe, uh, in my in, in my part in the beginning, I thought fifty one two Emma was going to be the number one uh, because it, it was more in the in the strength profile with Avanos in in in, 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 in in a way. But suddenly, I found that they like more strong uh, tobacco as it is. So black gold, blue sapphire, it, it start picking up a lot faster. I mean, ruby, of course, there's no doubt, so always there. But it, it, it it's very interesting to be studying each of the market. So uh, it's very hard to de- to to generalize everything as, as one it, it is, and especially in time frames. Mm-hmm. Now I know you're internally centered with that. You build the blend and put it out there, and they get it, they get it. They don't, you move on. I get that. So you're not influenced at all by that behavior. Like, do you pay attention to it, or are you just? Uh... Because I know. Let me give you another, <laughs> another example in, in the aspect. Uh, uh, 1502, especially the blending selection, mm-hmm. and in 1502 Nicaragua, uh, remember, we have in, in, in 1502 cigars, we got uh, three selections. We got the blending selection, we got the, the Nicaraguan selection, and then we got the masterpiece selection. Mm-hmm. And the blending selection, it's in a scotch. You know, you have, when you have blended scotch, you got single molds, and you got the Santa Bear rare scotch. Uh, it's something very, very similar to what we created in a profi- in profile, uh, a portfolio, sorry. It's the, it's the blend selection being Emma Ruby Black Gold, in which 80, 90 percent is Nicaraguan tobacco, and they have something from other regions in which they give it the, the, the perfect touch to that one. Uh, Fifty or two, the uh, uh, Nicaraguan selection, in which it's uh, oh great, we got the DJ just throwing his music on. Nice, yeah. I love Miami, so pump, pump to turn yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think it, it is. Uh, I said. Uh, uh, the uh, first rate DJ. So, you know, every Friday uh, around this time, he always plays his music loud for everybody to hear it. That's great. Uh, and, uh, we, we'll, we'll try to focus as it is. Is it good so, music? Uh, if you want to, uh, he's playing a lot of uh, uh, disco, uh, not a disco, uh, uh, club music. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, you are, you are, yeah. you are in, the, in the town. Mm-hmm. It's not like you're in, in Idaho in complaining about, you know, club music, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 
So back to, to, to the selections, then we have the Nicaraguan selections, and we got 15 to Nicaragua, you got blue sapphires, and the pure Nicaraguans. And then, of course, we already talked about the masterpiece selection, in which the XO. Yep. So in, in those characteristics, uh, when you see the, the, uh, in the blended selection, all our cigars are box press. So when we first introduced it to Europe, they told us, this is not going to work. Mm. People in Europe don't like box press. Right. They right. think it is, it, it's, a, it's a cheap, it's a machine made cigar. Yep. And the concept that they have. And, and, and we started like, okay, well, I'm not going to make it around. This is the way it's going to be. I'm sorry. But I mean, either it work or not. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it has like worked it. tremendous well. And, and sadly, everybody loves box press. And everybody's like, oh, we were waiting where the box press were coming here in, in, in Europe. I'm like, that's not what, 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 what my, uh, our people told us from the beginning. But you know what? I guess we got lucky in that, in that aspect. So yeah. it changes. You have a concept, you have perspective. But when you start putting a, a, that, that, that blend, that cigar in front of people many more times, and they try it, and they see the difference of what they've been trying before, they get shocked and they say, oh my God, I love it. Mm -hmm. Now, it's okay to have you, uh, to you, you, your comfort zone or, or you easy to go uh, 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 alcohol or, or, or tobacco uh, 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 as you prefer, uh, but it's always very important as well to have open mind. There are all the things out there. And so you try them, you never know how do the, what experience they bring to the table. In that aspect, so you you know it's good to have those always a humidor, but you know open wide, try others might change or might add to your experience mm -hmm. in that aspect. Mm. So you you you've answered a lot of questions, right? Like your 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 poise in the take it or leave it is like me when it comes to business, right? I have besides story geeks, even story geeks. Let's talk about story geeks. I say story geeks. This is the format. This is where we're going. Uh, it's clear to say I'm the main host of Stogie mm -hmm. Geeks now. It's been three years, right? And 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 I say, and when I talk to respective vendors who want to either come on for an interview and or or if they want to sponsor the show or, or whichever, I was like, here's the deal, and this is how it is. This is how I am when I represent Paul's company on the Security Weekly side, and 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 I say this is where we are, and that's that. And and I think. One way or the other way isn't is isn't the the right way. You know what I mean? Mm. For consumers, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, when I interview someone at Enrique's level and another person, another company, they, they if they're not corporate, corporate, right? They have that that same men mentality, which I think is important from a business owner perspective for them to know where they stand. And for them to know who they are and identify to themselves who they are. Because there are a lot of cigar companies that are owners out there who haven't even ha had an identity for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That uh, is when we difficult. that is when we don't have Enrique on the show and you and I have a conversation uh -huh. because that'll put him in an awkward spot. But Joe, I gotta go because you you know. But 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 you know, but but which we might continue that that conversation at, at some point moving forward, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's super cool that you brought up the fact that with with the box presses where people they like yeah. them, but I, they didn't like them because it was considered cheap you know man you know it's it's mm -hmm. the same thing in the fishing industry right years yeah. ago lobster was like what what the workers ate like mm -hmm. you know what i mean and because it was like cheap to find you know that was like now it's like the opposite you know what i mean but it that's changes. all but that's all consumer behavior so you don't chase any of that that's crazy uh, i you know what normally <laughs> I, I do not chase it i remember uh, 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 and of course i, I don't uh, there's no way to compare it uh, uh, what uh, Compare him to me, but uh, when Picasso was asked, "What do you look for it when, when you're doing your art?" He responded was very simple: said, "I don't look for it. I find." It's it's the, it's the same way uh, in artistic part. Uh, in, yep. in, in, in my point of view, uh, I, I, we might be looking for it, but we always find a way how to do it. You know, in box press around cigars, when we get the blend perfect, we try both both. Uh, a, 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 a form to, to which one's going to be better, a, 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 it's going to be taste better in that aspect. So, we really did that test for you. If we come out with something box press, I it's because we, I, I guarantee you that that box press it tastes a lot better than actually doing a, a round cigar and vice versa. 
in, in the blue sapphire, for example, it, it's a round cigar. Even Cachito is round cigar. They didn't need to have any anything box spray. It was perfect the way they were. Mm -hmm. So it's it, we did the test. That's why in, in blending for me it takes uh Jesus. Uh, I've been I've been working blends for eight years already, and they're, they're not quite ready. There's one in which hopefully next year we, we almost in the in the end part of it, which almost almost ready, and that has been easily seven years in the in, in, in the process, in in, in in getting all the different experience in the different stages to create something great for you to enjoy. It. Now making all this work, all this time consuming, and then uh, the market say, you know what, you should have done this and that and that and that. Well, yeah, I mean you can use you do it yourself. I'm not trying to be, <laughs> to, to be uh, a, a, how you say that? Uh, superhero? A, mm. a not superhero. I'm not <laughs> trying to be a, a stubborn in the aspect. But, I mean, this is how, how we think uh, this is the best option as it is. And I hope you enjoy it and, and I hope you, 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 you support us. But if you don't, there's many other uh, uh, blends, brands out there in which I'm sure they will satisfy uh, 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 your, your palate or your experience in that aspect. So you have to be true to yourself and, and true to 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 uh, to to what you present to to, to the market. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Do you have a question? It's actually yeah. It was, uh, when you were talking about the box press thing, it's actually I wanted to. Uh, I did think about something real quick. Uh, what is, what have your experiences been with the different vitolas and stuff like that? You know, like it's uh, me being in the industry for however long it's been now. Like just working at a cigar bar. It was uh, I used to deal with transient people that came over from Europe. And one of my favorite things to talk to them about was kind of like, you know, the difference between a Lancero, Robusto, Toro, Gordo, this and that, um, the Cuban classic sizes, you know, mm. without getting too creative with them or anything like that. Is, has there been like a shift that you've noticed over there? Because it's like, you know, I got a friend that lives in England and he'll send me photos. And I'm sitting back and I'm like, what, the, what are you smoking? That's not supposed to be over there, you know? And it's, um, I'm curious to see if like the Gordos are taking off now or the, you know, well, the double Coronas would be over there too, but the Toro extras. You know that 56 to 60 ring gauge. Have you noticed anything like that changing? Well, the market has changed. I've been almost 10 years in the industry, and I've been smoking cigars for maybe over 30 years. Oh, yeah, 30 years easily. Uh, so it's it, it had been many changes. It was one time in which the the bigger ring gate it was it was the uh, the the hot uh, the hot uh, disco in, in, in the music industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the, sorry, the hot album in, in, in the in the music industry. Uh, but now you start seeing a lot less uh, a big and ring gate and start going more to, to the to the smaller uh, gate. Uh, so it, it has been changes. It, 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 ha it has been, I'm not saying that, that, that 60 or over has been disappeared, but, you know, the, the, there has been changes, there's no doubt. Uh, uh, and there will be more changes coming along. I mean, now with, with what we have in, right now in, in, in the world, I mean, going to a cigar shop and, and being as long as before is going to be more difficult. So now you have to find other alternative, you know, or, or your time is going to be a little bit more difficult in that aspect. So that would definitely change the market in that aspect. Uh, but it's something that it should never change. It, and it can never change. First of all, it's being yourself, true to yourself. It's very important. And the second of all, it's the quality. It doesn't matter what size, what shape, what, what blend it is. You always focus on the quality. Don't follow other people. It's very simple. Be unique. Be yourself. It's very important to do that all the time. Uh, and, and, and let the market decide in that aspect. I mean, if you create something great, I'm sure that uh, they don't mind if it's random or box press because it's just a, a mindset. Uh, uh, but when they try it, they won't be, oh, my God, this is something completely out of this world. So if you would have been chasing, you're like, yeah, you know, I'll stay with the round cigars. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not, that's not the, the way I, I, I see uh, the, the war as uh, myself. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Are you um ten years? Per, where are we? Twenty twenty. You're you're okay with predicate, right? With all your cigars. Well, we have been working with was uh, it was uh, with the factories and lawyer put, putting everything together as it should be. So we are uh, we are okay. We have no problem. Yep. Uh, it was all the branching everything. So. Uh, uh, we had to do what, what we had to do. Right. Same as that. right. <laughs> Has that put a damper on you coming up with anything potentially new, or are you just you 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 strike me as a very patient person? 
right? Well, uh, and you, the you reason you why I say that is because I'm my not. My kids are running <laughs> around, and, and I am not that much of a patient. That, 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 that doesn't make crazy, but I'm th- uh, no, I'm talking about I like business. With, I am patient with cigars. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you're patient in business. So you're. So has that really hindered your your and any type of new plans, or are you not? I mean, you you are coming up with 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 the smaller, you know, the the, the twenty minute. Um, What's the word again? Cosetches? No. Gachitas. No. Gachitas. Gachitas. Yeah. Cosetcha. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're Cosetia, about, yeah. Cosetia, yeah. <laughs> right. I said harvest. My bad. Right. right? So you come out with that, but like, are you like? Do you you just you you seem to educate yourself and then position it finds you and then you release like I've how are you you're not looking to go okay. Whether the FDA gets his act together or not, that's supposedly coming up. I still think it's going to be well into a couple more years. They have bigger fish to fry than the premium cigar industry, but we'll 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 stay out of that argument <laughs> for for the sake of 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 love and peace, right? Um, I mean, I, I, I right, I'm in, right? <laughs> Are you looking to? So you're not you're not looking. It just if it finds you, then you're going to put it out. Is that exactly? Correct? I yep. mean, it's a. Uh, you, you, you see, a, a, in this industry, a lot of people or a lot of blender companies in which they come out with X amount of blends every year. And, you know, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. It, we still have a lot of bases to cover uh, in the market. We're still a very, very a, a small company uh, in, 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 in not only in, in cigar producing, also in a, a serving accounts. So we have a lot of place to grow or, 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 or just what we have at, at the moment. So I don't think it is 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 wise to be a uh, come out with uh, X amount of, of blends every year. Now with the regulation, that definitely limits more more things, but that doesn't bother me because, I, anyways, I was very slow uh, in my pa- in my my pace. So that's not, that's no problem. We'll see when we try to come out with different blends how we are gonna manage things around it. But uh, I do like to take my time. I I like to experience all the process as it is. Uh, and and make sure everything is as it should be when the consumer grab it from the shelf and he's he, and he enjoys the uh, our our products. It's very important for me to 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 have the 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 knowledge in in in, in the process. Mm-hmm. Do you have a question? Mm-mm. No, I have a question. We're gonna go forward, way forward, Ooh. right? Way way forward. What were some of your decisions to come into the business? Oof. I never see. See, wow. Wait, I'm forward. I'm on my third interview with you, so like I have to like pick pick my spots, right? Because the, <laughs> you know I have to pick my spots, right? Now I'm you know I'm not going to be like, hey, tell us what's new at fifteen oh two. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you know, come on my show, it'd be great, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So so <laughs> right. Um. Uh. W- Going the way forward, like way, way forward. Like, were you? What were you doing? Like, where were you when you decided? And my kind of semicolon next question, two part question, right? Is like, is it what you pictured ten, ten years ago? Because you can reflect back on ten years, right? Ooh. Yeah, sure, you can. You can reflect in, in, in six months. In, in six months. Look at this. Month. I can reflect <laughs> last week. <laughs> right. As a matter of fact, it's COVID times, Joe. I have a lot of time for reflection. <laughs> Jesus. No, it, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I was being in business in size. I mean, from hotel, banking, real estate, uh, re- retailers. In, 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 in business consulting, so my my background is business strategies. Yep. In, in in all the time I've been always enjoying cigars, no doubt. I never even follow or join the industry and the other side of the business. Uh, and then uh, it, I did I, how I was pushed to the industry by, was by mistake. And actually, it was Don Nestor Placencia that wanted to push me to the industry. Mm. I ran a meeting with him uh, almost 11 years ago. And it, 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 something related with tobacco itself. Uh, and when I tried to, to, to pitch him the idea, he's like, well, you know what? I already have that. that I don't see that, you know, how you going to play around it. I, I already have that basis covered. And like, I tried to persuade him. And he's the one that pushed me to start doing this. Uh, so for, for my perspective in that time, it was like, okay, you know what? I've been smoking cigar for, for, for many years. Uh, I don't know anything about blending. I don't know anything about tobacco. It's, uh, 
So uh, and that's when he he was very gentle and said, like, "I have all the knowledge. I have all the tobacco. It is." So I'm sure we can come out with uh, with, with something that you'll be very uh, uh, pleased with this because I can see from you that you do have the passion and whatever you, is missing, we do have it. So if we can combine both things, uh, both teams, that would be great. So that's when when, when in my mind in, in my mind I was like, "What I have to lose?" You know, I, I was living in Nicaragua at the time, you know, go, uh, living in Manawa, so driving from Manawa to Stalit, two hours and a half, uh, and, and, you know, spend more time in Stalit, I was able to do that and learn about the process itself. Uh, now, uh, like I said, that was by mistake. I was not planning to do this. Yeah. This, uh, I remember uh, him, uh, he, uh, I responded to him, like, but I like to smoke everybody's cigars. And he told me, you can still do that, but, you know, I'm sure <laughs> that you will become something great. And if it doesn't work, well, it doesn't work. So I did give it a chance, and we we start uh, uh, after a lot a lot of time uh, uh, learning about the process, learning about each of the tobacco, the characteristic of that, and we start coming up with the blends. I was blown away. I was like, "Wow, this is something I never taste. I never never had this experience before." And that's where my marketing uh, uh, mode kicks in, you know. And that started like, "What is it? We might have something here," and start developing everything around it. And I remember one of the things he told me is like, Enrique, we have so many people taking proud of our Nicaragua product in, in the world. I mean, you got people from the United States, Cubans, uh, Europe, Asia, everywhere. You know, there's nobody with a Nicaraguan flag. A true Nicaraguan, they actually can represent this country and love this country like you do. So if you can uh, come out with that, that, that uh, being that person, that Nicaragua face uh, ambassador, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. uh, you ha now you have something that we can take it away because everything else we can give it to you, and and that's that's when the slogan "Proud of Nicaragua" comes along. I mean, my, I, I was born and raised in Nicaragua. My family been living in Nicaragua for what over two hundred years. I mean, it's really hard to to get a more Nicaragua than that. So it it, it was a perfect combination in, 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 in the aspect of putting all the pieces together. And especially with, with their uh, backing me up was the, 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 the not only the, the, the tobacco, it's making sure that every, in every production, everything is as it should be. It, 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 it was a perfect match. Mm -hmm. So uh, looking backwards, uh, we, uh, I regret it? Definitely no. Uh, that's, that's, uh, I, I, I told my wife, I had not worked one, one day in, in, in in, in almost 11 years mm -hmm. and, and she's like yeah you have you have worked your ass off like yeah but i don't consider that work it's more yep. for me more like a passion or more like like, like a pleasure in, in the aspect so it's it's very little to to, to regret in the aspect but uh, everything did started by mistake uh, you know say was blending the cigar found me i i was not chasing them mm. it, it is true if 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 you and truly enjoy what you do you never work a day in your life i'm never like when i wake up in the morning i'm not like oh man i have to go to work i i i am blessed that w where i work and and what i've created and what i help aid and create in here at security weekly i'm part of a bigger machine ability to host story geek it's like it's 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 super cool so i get that aspect when you entered the business did you think what it would be is that different what are some of the things that have changed that you are like this, this industry is crazy like they're, they're, with me I'm like this these people these 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 cats in this industry are freaking crazy like mm -hmm. like you know what I mean oh, when yeah. they come up with stuff like uh, uh, do you even think like that or no probably not because you know, you're patient Joe, and I'm not Joe, <laughs> it's it's uh it's very interesting because I think this is the first piece I ever jumped in which I didn't do a business plan Mm -hmm. I just, you know, Wait, hard what? passion, uh, a great product, and I, and I jump to swing with the sharks yep. to see how it goes. Yep. And and, it's, and to this day, uh, I think I got very lucky uh, meeting the right people uh, at the right time. Yep. And, and that they definitely helped me a lot in, in expanding uh, as we are today. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, there's there's uh, it's a very unique interest, uh, industry. Very small industry, indeed, mm -hmm. and, and 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 you always think of, uh, as a small industry, everybody is smoking cigars on the, on the same roof, and everybody will get along mm -hmm. very well. No, nope. well, it's not like that, to be honest. So <laughs> you see a lot of of, of of egos around it, in which you're like why, eagles why would that or happen? eagles or or, or <laughs> egos, <laughs> egos, uh, ego, ego, yeah. ego. 
Egos? It's that uh, it, when, when, when you think too much of yourself. Yeah, ego. You know, okay. Ego. Okay. I thought you were gonna say eagles, mm -hmm. like uh, like a like an eagle, and I was like a bird, like you know what I mean. And well, I was like, maybe, I don't maybe know. that too. Some of the <laughs> maybe pigeons. But <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you. Right? Yeah, it is true. It's like it. it, it and, and when you look at like the volume and and the creativity that process that goes on. And all of that stuff. It's 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 crazy the total amount of number that only the premium cigar industry does. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the amount of money that's spent. I bet you there's more money spent in revenue. Oh my god! <laughs> Marketing this stuff. That this yep. stuff, you know, is there. And then you have to build a the machine with overhead and then figure that out. So you didn't write a business plan. You just you just jumped in. I did not. I then I just I jumped into the waters and and swim with the sharks from the beginning. And you were recruited. So that, uh, you were recruited by Mr. Placencia. <laughs> I was I recruited or pushed to it. I don't know which which would be more suitable oh. uh, work for it. But uh, you know what? He, he probably saw something in me. I didn't I didn't see myself in that in that time. I'm trying so, to picture. I think and I think I think him a lot for it. Yeah, I'm trying to picture like ten years ago, right? That puts you in 2010. Nicaragua was really getting on the map, and now it's clearly on the map. Like when it comes oh, yeah. to premium cigar, it, it, I mean, uh, when I had my radio show back in 2014, I was talking about that. Like Nicaragua in 2014 was start, was was eating away more of that market share off Dominican, or, oh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Honduras, you know, like eating. And then I was like, wow, like they're really here to stay, you know. And I remember. Like taking the time out and reflecting on my comments, which I often do. Like if I'm like uh, like at some point in time over next week, I'll reflect on our our interview. You know, it goes in it goes in your brain archives, right? And you reflect on it. And 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 I started doing some research. And I'm like, man, like like that that Nicaraguan profile is really here to stay. And so you got in it at a great time. At, I did. You know, uh, you, you uh, got in it at a great time because. Ten years ago, there were a lot less choices than there are now when it comes to, yes. to purely Nicaraguan. And now Indeed. there are people, regardless of, of, of predicate loom hanging over them and whatever, still trying to get into the business. You know? Yeah. It's not. It's not easy uh, industry. It's not, it's you, you, the, maybe the, the, the barriers of interest are very low. Uh, into now, I think that's going to change very soon. Yes, uh, but uh, it, the mortality rate is it, it's incredible. I remember uh, my first IPCPR was uh, Orlando was at uh, 2011, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, and a lot of new brands that I saw there, uh, most of them they're, they're they're not in the market anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. That's 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 uh, every year when I uh, go back to and I look for them. Some are gone, some are still there, the new ones. And then the next year, all those new ones, most of them, they were, they were gone. So it's, it's, it's a very tough one. It's, uh, and you see a lot of people, in, 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 of, what I, of my experience, it, when you jump to these industries, like, well, I, I love cigars. Uh, I can make great cigars. And then uh, business will be set. There's a lot more mechanism in the business of just making a great cigar as it is. Uh, and and, and as, a, as, a business, as a business, a business, a developer, you have to see all the aspects of, of, of the, you know, the distribution, the sale, of the, 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 the all, all, all integrates together in, in one. So it's it's uh it's not just about having cigars on the set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hmm. yeah. How are you with COVID? Other than going crazy, staying at home. <laughs> <laughs> In sales? Yeah. No, I'm the sales is your business. I'm sure you're fine. Well, you know what I mean? But yeah, like if you want to talk sales, you want to talk business, that like how, like like I don't know, like it it I, I can't not ask this question on Stogie Geeks, right? It's it's, sure. it's 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 always it's always the three questions, right? What do you think about PCA? What do you think about COVID? And what do you think about predicate date? Right? Like I can't. <laughs> like, I, like I have to. Like ask those questions, right? It's a must. You know, it's a must, right? So, uh, you know, I, I I don't like talking about PCA so much uh, there 
but you know it, it, it's uh so but we'll get to that uh, in a couple of seconds um i'll leave that like a quicker uh but like like covid right all of a sudden you know oh. you've been in this business you're 10 years old and like everyone else at some point in their time regardless of what they do for a profession covid hits and we go into this my word mysterious whirlwind of information good yeah. bad warm weather cold weather next year potentially next year vaccine no vaccine you got a visual we're in this whirlwind and barrage of information and business owners right and no exception right we're 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 a small business here i have a small business security weekly but it, you know produces the show they're a small business we've had to like say okay like you know First thing to come off the front line is, okay, you don't have sales reps on the road. You have cigar shops that have been closing, right? Yeah. I'm now getting local notices of cigar shops that might not r recover from this, right? Eh, taking it out of the industry, restaurants, all, no business is safe, right? And so um, how, how have you been, like, what's your assessment of, of okay, you're, you're 10 years old and where, and where are you going? Yeah, it's it's a little bit tough to 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 be in this uh, time frame in in, in, the, in the world. There's no doubt. Uh, I mean, in, when everything started hitting in in, in March, uh, uh, I mean, our sales went completely down. I mean, yeah, completely, almost to the floor. I mean, they, all my almost all my accounts were closed. Mm -hmm. just, you know, it's like they, they don't even answer the phone door. It's like somebody, you know what? We're closed. There's nothing we can do right now. Right. So if you can imagine, that definitely it, it hits, uh, being a, a boutique company or a, a tiny company, it, it hits very hard with the, the cash flow. Uh, we think that we did have some resources, uh, uh, backup resources, and we, we never let go anybody, and everybody got the, 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 the paycheck. Uh, and we, we tried to help them the best that we could in, in, in during the circumstances. Yep. So and, and that was a, that definitely that was a blessing. Like, you know, it, it's... It, it, it's not fair to whatever there's good times, you know, hey, you're my best friend, whatever bad times, I don't know you. So uh, we don't play with those rules. We, yep. we all, loyalty for us is very important uh, and, and, and have our team together the best that we can. Uh, we don't have a big, a, big, a big team like many other big companies, in which does make a, a, a things a, a little bit easier to manage it in the aspect. So, uh, uh, but in the last two, two months, uh, we have seen some recovering, not to the way we were before. But we they have seen some recoveries, and I think uh, this uh, in the next easily twelve months is going to be a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, a uh, uh, tougher in, in my aspect is to adjust to the new rules of life. Mm -hmm. The world has had changed. It, it changed. It's simple. And, and, and one day after the, from one month to another, the world completely changed. Our habits or the way of of, 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 of of life have changed, and we have to adapt to that one. Uh, do people are going to start consuming less cigars or, or stop smoking cigars? I don't think so. That's no doubt. And uh, we will be right here to help them to have at least those, uh, be, be, between all, all these crises that's happening in the world, to have those uh, hour or two hours, three hours a day to relax and enjoy. And that's, that's that's been a, a statement, you know. it's uh, it, There there has been good times uh, and there have always been bad times in, 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 in history. Uh, but we are always been true to ourselves. And that's very important. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's been uh, you like me have the luxury of doing business globally, right? So you know, in in the security world, I deal with business globally, and I get to speak to people in different countries and whatnot. And it's kind of a mixed a mixed bag, as we say here in the Northeast, right? It's like pulling a lottery. Oh, we're not in lockdown. We're not there, and. You know, some places are still under, like, you're in one of the hot spots there in Miami. Yeah. And uh, we all thought that, you know, the March through May was going to be bad. But yeah, it's like now we're dealing with, like, COVID fallout of business. You know what I mean? And it doesn't matter what the premium is going to like, fallout. People's behavior. Some people are afraid to go out. Some people are not how that affects you what whatever your restrictions are lockdown now they're looking at yeah. state lockdowns and i don't know like at the end of the day regardless of the stuff that we can't handle you still gotta you like me still have to navigate through the waters 
we have to adjust. Yep. To adjust to, to, to a new reality. It's simple as that. I mean, it's uh, everything in life, it, 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 the difference is, it, it, between it, it, human or, or uh, uh, beings or, or, or companies or a, a, any type of, 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 of functions in this world. It's if you don't adapt to the new reality, you most likely will disappear. Mm-hmm. And, and that uh, you'll be extinct. There's, there's no doubt. You know, we have to find a way how to adapt. Simple as, as it is, but we have to keep going forward. We always have to be fighting for it. Right, right. Uh, PCA not being here this year because of the virus, not because of its situation. Deal, no deal for you? Uh, not really. For me, uh, P- uh, PCA or PCPR, as it was before, it was uh, more... As uh, so being a present in yep. that in the in, in, in the industry, always finding everybody under one roof. It was like easy to 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 uh, to uh, a, a, to follow up with them, to meet them, to meet to meet, uh, meet, uh, meet new faces, and which is always important. Uh, and in se- in number sales wise, for me, it never has been something wow. Yeah, uh, we always did a lot more business before and after IPCPR or PCA. So, but it was necessary. If you want to be in the industry, you had to be there. Yeah. So uh, uh, this year, not having it, uh, I don't think it's going to make a big change in my in, in, in my numbers in, in the end. But it will definitely uh, it, it, it will uh, put a bit more uh, a cold atmosphere in the industry as uh, compared as many other years before. You know, it's not the same. This is a gentleman habit in which it has been for five hundred years, and then thank God now which we we, we do in a uh, Enjoy with ladies as well, uh, but it, it has been a face-to-face a, a, a experience. You know, a handshake, a, a, a offer a cigar, a give a cigar back, a laugh, a talk about jokes, talk about business, talk about all that. That part of, 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 of the riches of the industry is being lacking right now. But sadly, there's nothing else we can do until things get back to normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you know. Depending on your business model, but I think your assessment of if if you have to be there, it's it's a smart move to 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 be at, at the, those conferences. We're running into that um, here in the cybersecurity field as well. We usually first week of Vegas go to a big conference, and then we're we're dealing with what's going on without that and there. And you and you pivot with the business, you know, you pivot mm-hmm. with the business. Do you think that? Um, that the what's the question? It was just off the top of my head. I had one more question for you, and then we can can uh, unfortunately wrap up and say our goodbyes, which is always sad when you're on the show. Well, you gonna right. send me back to my kids? <laughs> 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 right? <clears throat> no, I had another question. God, it was right off the top of my head. It was related to that. Um, give me thirty seconds. Ask me a question. Give me thirty seconds. To think about it. Not even thirty seconds. Wait, do I have free reign on questions or no? You can ask whatever you whatever want, to. want, personal or whatever. Okay, you know, you not to... that personal. No. <laughs> oh. Never mind. I wanted to ask something about his younger years, but never mind. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so but no. When but you're I'll... in Nicaragua and we're a teenager. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask about that. Uh, I've heard some stories. Anyway, um, but no, it's actually it's a. Uh, one thing I've always wondered is I've had a lot of people always ask me, like, whenever they come into the shop, like, are you going out to the trade show? And I always mm-hmm. sat back, and I was just like, no, and I've had, I haven't had an interest in it. But as you can tell, I'm a quiet guy, so why would I go throw myself in front of thousands of people, you know, and walk around and deal with them? But I've always wondered, in terms of a monetary value and a networking value, how valuable was the trade show to you, the PCA to you, mm. as a company or even just as a person? as well mm. if you want to make it a little bit personal as well to the point where it's just like it was a cool escape for you where you got to see a bunch of old friends or was it kind of like you know do some collaborations bounce ideas off of them how valuable was the trade show to a company i, I think it's really hard to monitor it uh, 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 as a way of measuring uh, uh but in, in my perspective uh, it's it, it was very important i mean you always met wonderful people there uh, people that they, they became very good friends with me uh, uh, over the years and always always keep in touch so uh, lacking that part is 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 very is very uh, sad in, in a way uh, also seeing what the industry is, is doing was was uh, a some a, 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 a what's new out there a, all the aspect is always very important to know it uh, but for me the, 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 the getting to know more people is the most 
a, a part of it. But it's really hard to quantify quanti quantify it in in, in in numbers to to see if it's proper or not to go there. Uh, I would say that uh, if uh, we will not be where we are right now without those trade shows, because we definitely uh, got our, uh, our world out a lot uh, easier than just going around all the shops, is having all the shops coming to our uh, under one roof. So it, it, it was definitely a lot easier to to manage that aspect. Uh, but uh, like I said before, uh, in sales wise, PCA uh, uh, was never for me a big hit in that aspect. Uh, but in the long term, it de definitely helped a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. My like question that. was moderately stemming off of the uh, th the without the conference industry wise. This is, was my question, and, and like, do you think it would? Do Do you think that the market? Do you think that cigar sales are going to go back? to original roots from a consumer perspective. And what I mean by that is like country specific or size spe specific. Like, you know how you always have like, you know, in Nicaragua, you have this cigar is the hot one, this cigar is the hot one, and then another one comes back. And then, or, or do you think that um, it's the, the, either it's size or it's profile or flavor profile in there. And I know that you don't chase that, but, it's something that you have to deal with when you or one of your reps is on the road mm. that has to, you know, uh, f fight for that shelf space, right? Or or, of or or negotiate that shelf space. Do you find um, on your end when you're dealing with, with manufacturer, is it going back to more original stuff? Because everything goes in cycles, right? You know, you know everything goes in cycles. Like, yeah. well, you know, well, two years from now, we'll be talking about yeah. COVID and it goes in cycles and we'll be dealing with the fallout. Still, it might not be as bad as today. But, like, what do you think of, of, of like, that, that future of the industry, that aspect? Well, I, I don't think it, the, the industry, it was, uh, or, the, or, the cons or the demand part of the industry was related with the, the, the trade shows as itself. I, I, I believe the, those demands are more uh, uh, related or, or with the consuming side of it. Uh, the trade show, it, it was a great way to express yourself, uh, but it, it, it was one channel. Uh, there are many other channels. As we are uh, right now talking to each other, this, this one channel, the social media, is making a big difference as well. So you don't have to be in a trade show to actually understand what's going on in the world and, and, and what uh, and what people are, are, are liking or, or what people are not liking. So I don't think that will have a, a big hit in, in, the industry, in the industry, at least not in the short term. Uh, what I what I do uh, believe that uh, it will be a little bit more cold in that aspect, uh, in, in in the long term, uh, with that having that that that, that human relationship, uh, things will start getting a little bit cold in that aspect. Will that uh, lower the demand the, the, the demand on cigars? I don't actually see that way, uh, but uh, but it definitely it, it will go more to that a little bit more cold in that aspect. Mm -hmm. I see it getting cold on your end. Like well, not right now. Right now, it's it's not. It's eighty-eight. Well, <laughs> and it's hundred percent humidity. Yeah, right, right, it's right. Really right. Hard, it, uh, it's really hard to keep my cigar lit. <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, mine too, because I do too much talking. But uh, what else is new? Uh, right, right. Yeah. But uh, I think on on Adam's end, on the actual dealing with the consumer there, I think the consumer is they might instead of coming in for one every day, they might buy five. Oh yeah, and then yeah. Yeah. not come in every day. Now a lot of that here in the Northeast because the weather is eighty-five, like like you guys, right? But that's going away in sixty days, right? For us, it'll go from eighty-five to forty-five quick. Oh, yeah. real quick. You oh. know, uh, you know, it takes one thunderstorm or a hurricane threat, which by the time it gets to us turns to tropical storm, and then the weather shifts. I think it blows all the hot air down or however that works right <laughs> but anyway yeah so you know and, and, you're and, still here and and uh yet i'm still here yeah. right that's a good point yeah. right um you know i i think that the consumers it's not gonna lower the demand for the cigars and yeah. when i you know it's funny because uh when 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 i go to different shops and they say story geeks like you know you don't interview like you talk about the business, this and that, and the trade show, or or whatever the business. They're like, 
some of the consumers don't even want to get involved in all of that. No, yeah. They just want their sticks and whatever they like. You know what I mean? And so at the end of the day, here we are. You know, talking our, our talk and you know business. You know, it's kind of like you know, it's kind of like political people, right? The, mm. we're, we're like the elected officials talking about the way that they, and all, and, and yet eighty-seven percent of the population isn't voting yeah. and just doesn't even <laughs> give a crap about the conversations. <laughs> they just got to deal with the consequences of what's on the shelf. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it's just See, funny. It's, true to that. it's 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 a funny world. But you know, it's, it's a, one of the things, and I believe in the. When the FDA start regulating cigars itself, you know, before you, well, you buy a cigar in the shop, you go to smoke in the park, or yep. you go to 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 to, to your restaurant, smoke a cigar there or the bar or whatever you want to do. It. But since all those places start closing down, then you had to go to a, a specific place to actually enjoy cigars, and that's when you have that kind of camaraderia that that people getting together. I'm bonding to, uh, between each other. You know, business come along, the relations come along, the you know, all, all those things. Uh, now, with this COVID, that is going to kick a little bit backwards in the aspect because now you cannot uh, uh, go to a park to smoke a cigar. Now you cannot go to a cigar shop to smoke a cigar. Now, where where do you go? And that's going to be, uh, uh, that's why I said in the long term, that will definitely it will get some affected uh, in that aspect. And, and of course, losing that relationship, a lot of people, didn't go there in the beginning just because I want to have a cigar. You know, I like to be here. I like to be part of this club. I like to, I, hey, I'm going to meet with, with, with this this friend. I don't see him uh, every day, but, you know, I'm going to meet when, uh, with him in a club. And what I'm doing there, I'm going to smoke a great cigar. Yep. So mm-hmm. that aspect of, of, of a club, of, of, of friendship, of, of camaraderia, is, is, is the one getting hurt very, very bad right now. Mm-hmm. And, and, and hopefully this goes away. So this goes back to normal. Mm-hmm. It's actually I got a quick question about that because it was um you just made me think about this. Do you think that because of that because that's the one thing that I love about cigar bars and lounges is like what you said the camaraderie that comes along you know the what network. Is- but do you think it's actually maybe you, obviously you can't quantify it but it's just kind of like do you think maybe pushing people online is gonna actually because I'm assuming people are looking for kind of like some like somebody to talk to about this whether they're typing sure. it or in a Zoom. Do you think that'll actually help expand the horizons for a lot of cigar smokers instead of getting stuck in your usual shop where you can't get every single cigar that comes through? Yeah. Now all of a sudden, where it's just like you know, say for example, Joe and I were on a Zoom call or something with a bunch of people all over the country. He's smoking a 1502. I never heard about it. Next thing you know, it I'm like, well, no, let me go see what this is like. You know, and then you start doing the research, you go and try to find a local shop or you order online. Do you think it'll bring that camaraderie together on a more kind of like national, international level or expand or even bring other boutique brands into the limelight a little bit? Do you think that's possibly going to be a little bit of a fallout from this as well? Or, you know, that's a good question about, about the boutique. Definitely. It's a, no, definitely. That's a, that's a great question. And, and like I said, it's, it's a change, a change of, of, of uh, of habits, the, we, we, human beings, we, we, are, we, we are humans of habits, simple as that. Uh, but this, it has, it, has, it has started changing years ago. Now, what it, it was COVID, what happened, it's, we, we, we put the, the, the food and the gas and accelerated it. Mm. But years ago, I used to have a video conference with people in Europe, in Asia, and all that, and, you know, talk about cigars, etc. Now, since everything else is closed, you know, you, you, you're more in, in lean to, to start doing that. So it, 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 that would change rule of the game. There's no doubt it would change the rule of the game. Would affect uh, the numbers in the end on consuming? I don't think so. And I, I, I'm betting that that was not going to be the case. But it would definitely change things around. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I know I've been getting a lot of new cigar smokers coming through, and it's just like people are they're jumping on on the other side. You got people that smoke cigars, and you got cigar smokers, two different animals at the end of the day. Completely. You yeah. know, and it's just kind of cool where it's all of a sudden these new people are coming in. So, you know, like a uh, fresh breath of air and whatnot where you're sitting back. Next thing you know, they're asking me about different questions about brands I've never even heard about, you know, because I got caught in my own trap of being at my own shop or being at all the shops in the area. And there's only so many shops that carry something unique. You know, to it. So I've always like I've tried to figure that out. If, it's, if you're seeing a benefit from that side to it as well, um, possibly like you know different regions you never had a hold in or anything else like that, kind of like picking up a little bit. So, but I don't know. It's just something I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Thing to, it was a good question. There's no doubt. Hmm. Yeah, I can imagine that the more social influence you have via the internet as a boutique cigar company 
the faster you're going to see that results than if you were uh, a corporate roller. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right? I mean, I would, I would, I would imagine. I love it. I would imagine, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, Stogie Geeks, I want to encourage you, check out what Enrique has been up to, and you can educate yourself on all of the brands. You just have to go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 335, or if you don't want to, you can go to Global Premium Cigars, and check out Enrique. Sign up for his social media, Global Premium Cigars, and 1502 Cigars. Check them out and follow him. If you follow Enrique on social media, I promise you he will give you at least 10 seconds of relaxation and enjoy because every day he posts that he is relaxing and enjoying. And that's <laughs> that's that's it's what it's a must. All, it, it, it is you a must. To. It is a must. That's for sure. Enrique, please keep in touch. It was a pleasure to uh, have you here. Mm. Um, thank you for letting us interview again on Stogie Geeks. And I wish you nothing but success for sure. Um, and I, I, I love how, and I will use this in other interviews, and I will always credit you, how you let the flavor come to you. Mm-hmm. So if you get calls, if you get calls from people in the industry saying, I had an interview with that crazy kid on Stogie Geeks, and he said, you <laughs> said this, you let me know, right? <laughs> you let me know. All right, Stogie Geeks, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Adam and I are going to talk about the industry and some cigar news. We'll be right back. <laughs> 